Hope. How are you? Hope you're fine. This is the shy easy show. Okay, where you go? Why have I got horns? Oh no. Oh, it's the shy life podcast. Oh, there's going to be some drama ahead. All I wanted was a pie. And then I hatched out of an egg. Okay, bring the mic over. He's ready to record. Is it metaphorical? Is it, is it deep? Is it deep? The boy, he said all that shy is right. She. Blimey, Governor. It's the Shy Life Podcast. Oh, my goodness. Hello, Paul. Oh, quack, quack, quack. I dare how he does it. Excellent. Bonjour et bienvenue au podcast The Shy Life. Hello. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Shy Life Podcast with me, Paul the Shy Yeti. How are you doing? I'm all right. So what's this episode going to be about? Well, it's going to be a poetry episode, but a slightly different one. Because, well, I'm all about getting the old gang back together. Um, you may not even know who the old gang was. Actually, there's only two of us. But uh, anyway, let's run the theme music. When we come back, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more. All right, run that theme music. Darling, it's the Shy Life podcast. <laughs> keep it rolling, keep it rolling. Yes, but it's a positive thing for the Shy Life, the Shy Life. I mean, I'll go anywhere for a potato. Delicious. Hello, campers. How are you? Go Shy Yeti. Oh, I hope he hasn't found out my secret. I think he has. I love the Yeti's S. It's my favorite thing. If you thought that was bad, just listen to the... Yeah, I, I have a strangely drawn to Yeti Andrew Jones' ankles as well. <laughs> I could eat my body weight in crisps. Has anyone seen my hot sausage? It's all gooey and meaty and yum, 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 yum. It's <laughs> I don't think I'm ready to speak about it. Here comes the grizzly. Hi there. It's the Shy Life Podcast. I can't wait for it to begin. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Marvelous. <laughs> Marvelous. <laughs> oh dear, I can't believe that old bag is still around. So, what's going on, you're asking? Who's this old gang? Well, back when I did my poetry shows at the Poetry Cafe, I used to do shows with... My friend John Smallshaw, who I was introduced to by um, Callum's sister, I think. I'll have to check with him about that. But yeah, I've not been doing my shows that long. And I did a special uh, charity show. And Julie, Callum's sister, had arranged um, the other poets to perform that evening. And John was one of them. And after that, I asked John to, I don't like to say be my support act because he wasn't he he had his own section of the show um i'd read some he'd read some i'd do some more then we'd have a break uh, i'd read some more and then he'd come in again and do some of his and luckily i was able to preserve um some of his performances as well as my own when i did videos anyway um some of those videos are on youtube some of them i've taken the audio off and included in episodes of the podcast but one thing i do remember is that my very last poetry cafe show in 2016 i uh, was for my book a yeti way of thinking and that was one of the first episodes of the podcast and i'm pretty sure that john's performance was also preserved and appeared in that episode um so yeah right back at the start of the show i was still doing my poetry shows and well i, I, well, I was coming to the end of that era and john was there back then and uh, yeah you, you may well have heard his voice in other episodes anyway i've not spoken to him for quite a while and we've not done any live performances in quite a while so i said to him why don't we get the old gang together and why don't we have a chat i'm not quite sure what form it's going to take i'm hoping he'll have some poems for us and i've decided to read some poems from my collection pieces of shayeti which i released in 2019 but well i never did a poetry cafe show for them and i, I was Surprised to look back, and although I'm sure I've read poems from this collection at different times, and some may even have gone into my my greatest hits collection, um, but I never did an episode when that book came out um, back in 2019. So, yeah, I'm going to mainly aim to read things from that book. But uh, anyway, 
let's get started. Let's see how John's doing. And, well, I'll be back to speak to you again at some point later in the episode. Um, yeah, okay, let's do it. Let's um, play some music and John will be here. He's the star of Radio 4, and uh, well, I'm sure he'll, he'll tell you more. Uh, I'm practicing to be shy in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> John. Oh, thank you very much. Um, uh, I'm glad you came this evening. We all like animals. Anybody got any dogs? No. <laughs> Anybody got any cats? Yes. I hate cats. <laughs> <laughs> the noise that they make when they're out looking for a date. And it's always bleeding late when they get that urge to go out and merge. <laughs> <laughs> and I've forgotten the rest of it. Nervous, nervous. And they purr, I swear, they do. And they're always following you. And they itch and they scratch. Let's say I haven't got a cat flap, I've got to leave the back door on the latch. <laughs> <laughs> they give me the pip. The way they snuggle up to that catnip. I might pull over, looks like it's been pulled over the coals. Why don't the cats use scratch catching poles? Cat scratching poles, I'll get that right. <laughs> I should have got a dog. Or even better, a slimy green frog. Couldn't be any worse. Holding a cat can be such a cat curse. But don't worry, this has all been a joke. I'm just blowing smoke. Samantha, my Persian blue, is a friend good and true. I love her to pieces, I wouldn't swap her for gold. And when you're getting old, a cat can be such a comfort. Thank you. <laughs> that's that one. <laughs> uh, that's the first time I've, I've uh, tried to remember that. And it worked almost. <laughs> anyway, we'll go on to some. Does anyone have an aquarium? Oh, thank God for that. <laughs> the Egyptian plover was sat in the sun, eating the leeches of a crocodile's tongue. He flew off into the air, outspread wingtips, opened his lips and spat out the pips. The crocodile swam off somewhere midstream, settled himself down to sleep and to dream. Meanwhile, Gnu's doing what Gnu's usually do, arrived at the stream with the home of a loon. The clock woke up from his dream and in his eyes was a gleam. He realised that the Gnu's needed to cross, and what would be his gain would be the Gnu's loss. <laughs> I'll get there. The Gnu started to splash, the clock started to dash, and he grabbed one or two of the Gnu's, totally deaf to their cries, and took them down to the deep to meet their demise. So, if Gnu start to splash and crocs start to dash, there is only ever one winner, and the loser becomes dinner. Oh, listeners, uh, before we continue, I should just mention that um, John and I had problems with Zoom, so in the end we connected via Facebook, which of course you can't record on, or you can't record the call, so I recorded the chat on my iPhone, and I think it came out pretty much okay. It's not so different from how I used to do things very, uh, in the early days of the podcast before you could record um, Skype calls and things like that, so... I, I hope I hope it's all right. So uh, I think it's worth hearing anyway. Um, so here we go, John Smallshaw and me. Hi, I can see you now. Yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> uh, I might get interrupted by the cat. Can't hear you. Oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> I can't. I can't hear you. You. Um, no sound. You have no sound. <laughs> I 
I, I put these back on, but I need to... No, I can't hear you still, no. Oh. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> um... No, there's something wrong here. I can't hear you, Paul. Ah, something came through. Can you hear me? Yes, breaking a bit, but speak a bit more. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, 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 <laughs> I can hear you. The trouble is, I can't, I won't be getting your voice. I don't think I'll be getting... Speak, if you speak. I can hear you now. Oh. Well, that's weird, because you're still coming out of my computer. So, and, and, well, and my phone will be picking up me, so I don't know what's going on here, but anyway. I'm not, I'm not on Zoom, because I've just knocked it off. Yeah, I've, t I've turned off Zoom, too. But, uh, well, let's just, let's just see what, <laughs> see what, see what happens. Paul, anyway. it's all fun. Technology. In the meantime, how are you doing? I'm not doing too badly, thank you. Well... I've got I've got lots of aches and pains, but I'm not doing too badly from a creative point of view and doing. Well, no, neither am I. I've got lots of aches and pains too, but yeah. that's one of the problems of getting old, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so it's been it's been quite a long time since we did our last show at the. So I thought it's, we, I thought, been it's four like four years, five years. It's more than it's more than that. It's more like seven and a bit. Um, Is it real? Yeah. Oh, shame. It, and I'm still working at the same place. <laughs> it, well, because um, we we did a sh we did a show at the Poetry Cafe in 2016. Yeah, was about the summer of 2016. That was in the very early days of me doing the podcast. And um, so I'm just going to close. Can you still hear me? I can hear yeah, you. So I had something over the screen, so I got rid of that. Um, I, yeah, we did a show. In 2016 and it was like it, it ended up being one of the early episodes of the podcast and and now i've done 600 and something episodes um i think i think i might have come to i think you might have done a or been involved in a, a um an open mic night that i came to maybe later that year at the um um the the place in off soho square i've forgotten its name now so House of St Barnabas. Yes, yeah. I think because yeah. I, I remember, I remember we were sort of doing it in the summer, but it was starting to get a bit dark, and and I, my eyesight was beginning to go. Oh, I think I might need a light on that. <laughs> am I going to? Because I can't remember. <laughs> I need my script. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, um, but I haven't I haven't done any more shows since then. P partly because I've written less and less because I've been doing more and more podcasting. Um, although I do still write some things for the because the podcast is like uh, has a fictional side to it so I play some characters and other people play characters and, and some episodes are just like this or just talking or I do I've always read my poems on the podcast um, but uh, I, I, I just haven't done I, I kind of feel like by 2016 I was beginning to think Oh, I, I feel like I'm going around in circles a bit, or I haven't got. I've kind of done so many poems that I've covered the same topics, and I need to have a bit of a break. Um, but uh, and this I understand, yeah. It, it, because I, I, I've always, done, I've always approached things with such a sort of when I do something, I do it and I do it big, sort of thing. And um, and. And yeah, I mean, I have done one or two things. I did. My friend Harry, he writes music, and we and we've been doing songs together. Well, he, well, he he'd been kind of getting me to sing, which I can't do at all. But um, last year, though, I wrote some lyrics, um, for, for, and and he wrote some music to it, and we did that. So I'm still sort of wanting to do a bit more of that. I want to get back into doing a bit more, but um, I, I also feel I need to change my rhyming. I feel like. I had three or four different rhyming structures that I, I always stuck to, and um, and I don't know why. It's just what happened. <laughs> did, did it make you feel comfortable though? Those structures that you. I think they must have done. Managed. Yeah, I think they must have done. Because uh, this is what I think of of myself. Yeah. Uh, and and at the end of the day, well, for me anyway, I'm writing for myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's my catharsis, if you yeah, like. Yeah. Um, of course, I'd like to write a bestseller, but that's not always possible, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, um, I, 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 I want. I wish I'd, I, I. I'm kind of the sort of person who likes. I quite like reading 
factual books about, say, old TV shows. And I really wish that I had started... When I, if I'd have known my podcast was going to go on such a long time, I would have liked to have written... I should have done it from episode one and written, you know, facts and figures for each episode as I went along. And then I could have um, released, a, 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 like, the, the the big bumper book of the first 100 episodes of the Charlotte podcast or something. Um, but now it's such a big... It's a, such a big thing that again, I don't, I can't see myself ever having the time to do that, and I don't know that anyone other than me would have, have, have wanted to have read it. But, but again, not the not the point because you do you do do these things for yourself as much as anything. Um, but um, do you do you still write as? Because you always used to write a lot as well. Oh my God! Well, on on one of the sites I use Hello Poetry. It's probably the only site because. My website, I kicked into touch because they kept on saying, oh, you need to pay more money and this is, this is, uh, you know what, I stick it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So I just got over 13,000 on that one, mm -hmm. on Hello Poetry. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at 12,999 and I just had this mad thought, I'll stop when I get to 13,000. Mm -hmm. But I'm on 13,003 now, so I'll <laughs> stop when I get to 14,000. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, it's, it's I, I write when I wake in the morning, and sometimes I'll pen out three or four bits of rubbish, or I might give it a miss for a day or two. It's yeah. until something tickles me, you know. Yeah. Uh, and some I really like, and some I look at and I think, oh, did I write this rubbish? <laughs> and I know I did. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and but it's, as I say, it's it's more for me than for anyone else. Yeah, well, that's so the, if people like it, good, but it's yeah. not for them really. Well, that's the main thing. And you know, doing my podcast, you never get much feedback until you make make a comment like, "Oh, I don't know if anyone actually likes the poetry episodes," and then somebody will go, "Oh, those are my favourite episodes." So, but people don't always <laughs> tell you what they like, and I don't want my show to be about any one thing. Um, so. Yeah, but you don't always know. Again, I like doing the acting and the the characters and the stories, and I love improvising. Um, do you, let me interrupt you. Do you still go out filming? Um, I don't. Well, with my rheumatism, I haven't been going out. In the early days, you did. Yeah, yeah. I well, uh, yes. Around the time that we were doing our shows, I was doing my Shayeti and location videos, and and yeah. then that's how I incorporated the stuff from the poetry cafe into those videos. <laughs> Um, which is, I was, I was thinking, it's nice that we've got those. We've got you doing stuff and me doing stuff. Um, yes. Did, did you have one with uh, Gary Groves doing yes. stuff? Yes. yes. Yeah, I was just looking for that one because I think that was a great evening. And Rich, Rich Harris came along. Was that the night? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was also a, a was he Ethiopian guy? I can't remember his name. He came along and did some poetry. Oh, we had and. Because I was thinking, I think that was the first time we did a show together. Because was wasn't it Julie Callum's sister who introduced That's us? That's right. And that was the it's Gary Grove <laughs> night. Um, but then you and I did lots of other shows. So that was around I don't know twenty ten maybe ten years ago easily yeah, yeah. twelve years probably. Yeah. And, and then we did. I think you did every show that you were available for that I did till I stopped doing them. Um, Paul, I was happy to be invited along, and I, I really appreciate that. But, you know, like you, in, I, I was on holiday earlier this year. My wife was away. It was only the week. So I went and did a, a gig in the West End uh -huh. in a yeah. pub yeah. by um, Oxford Circus, I think. And I, I also did one in the Spice of Life at the bottom of Greek Street one lunchtime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Full of old people. <laughs> Took them half an hour to get on the stage to read for two minutes, <laughs> uh, but I enjoyed it. It's just it's not something that I feel I need to go out and do all the time. No, I mean you know one time I did, but not not anymore. Well, the the part the thing is, I think I only ever did one show where I was <laughs> requested. <laughs> if you know what I mean, um, I remember I I got asked to do a Valentine show for for in a particular club somewhere and I actually got paid in uh, like a percentage of the takings and like my drinks for the night that's the only time I ever got paid for my work um, and, and, and um, I, I, otherwise it was always me doing my own shows for charity 
or for yeah. charity man and and um and unfortunately it just got more and more expensive to hire the space at the poetry cafe um because they had various different takeovers and people taking uh, yeah. just, well i've not been in there since anyway no, no. Um, and, it was, it, and I think I've always used that though as a sort of benchmark of um, like how many people could you get in the poetry cafe on a busy day um, we never got as many as 50 but on those, po on those open mic nights it would have been packed and it would have been I don't know 50 or so people and, and the room would have been absolutely packed and, and now I think well I do get I get more than that with my podcast so I am getting out to bigger to more people hopefully whatever i do so um and it doesn't co it doesn't it still costs me money to do podcasting because um but uh i've made a lot of friends all over the world of other podcasters and yeah. and i've collaborated with other podcasters in the same way that we collaborated um and you know i, I found it, it is amazing with the internet that you meet people you'd never have met 20 or whatever years ago because you just would never know they existed. Um, well, yeah, yeah, this is true. <laughs> um, I, I, like, I like the worldwide aspects of, of the web. Yeah. And and you can see people following you from Kuala Lumpur, yeah, yeah. Uh, Singapore and yeah. Japan, and, and people following you from Sheffield, you know. And yeah. So your back garden now is the world. Yeah, and um, I, I, I sort of found... I found sort of people in, say, America who have been doing something very similar to what I've done, like, but, but we would never have known each other existed, and now we can collaborate and have, our, and have characters meet and invent more silly stories. And, um, and, and I, I've always liked the improvisational side. When I did my videos back in the 90s, it was always my Sutton Park stuff. It was all... Sutton Park, yeah. yeah. It was all improvisation and not knowing quite what the next the person was going to say next and um and, and that being part of the excitement of it because you'd have to kind of run with whatever the other person said and sometimes you'd improvise with somebody who really wanted to make your work difficult <laughs> your day difficult. Um, yeah uh, i can see that would be fun yeah and um yeah so I, I i i do enjoy a lot doing a lot of that but um i did think i might um, use this opportunity to, uh, and I might record. I might record something for you, whilst you're here, but I might record something and add it in. Is that I realised that I did a book in 2019, which is sort of the last poetry book I did, other than a compilation. And I never even did a a show on my show, if you know. What I mean, I know I, I'm surprised I didn't do a. Oh look, I got a new book on the podcast sort of episode, and I didn't. So. Um, I feel if I read anything during whilst we're talking today, then I should do it from that. But um, but again, public self-publishing became more complicated as well. <laughs> it, well, my wife did two for me, and and both of them were well. One of them I sold in the charity for the charity, mm. and and the second one we did during lockdown, and I just gave them away. Yeah. There were more photographs and just a few bits of odd poetry. Well, yeah. very odd poetry, if you ask me. Um, but it, it, it's just the vanity, isn't it? We all want... Our, our names are out there, Paul. We, I don't need to be vain about that anymore. Yeah. Oh, I want a book. I want to make a book. And, and when you've done it, yes, it's nice. But you still got to go to work the next day. Yeah. yeah I, it, I, I, did li I did like having... The, like a physical thing um, I think that's why I'd like to have a physical thing for the podcast even though it's an audio thing I'd still like to well I've done a few sort of merchandise -y type things on Redbubble and got like a t-shirt with it on or a, or a mug with my logo with the logo on and, and, and that somehow makes it feel more real so you can see I mean, I've touch. got two or three of your books on the bookshelf yeah, yeah. not as shy as I was do you yeah, remember that one right. that was yeah. that was the one I did for my 40th and now I'm nearly at my 50th so Oh, <laughs> uh, I, I nearly at my seventieth. Uh, Sixty-seven. Yeah. I would have thought that. Yeah. This is this. We're getting old, Paul. Uh, That's the problem, isn't it? Uh, um, I mean the um, the the the, the, the pa pandemic 
sort of didn't help with getting out and do, you know maybe I would have done got back into doing more things but you know with what with that going on that's that was such a big deal that you know it kind of it it, it made my sociability go from being in person to being online um, yes I did I did some stuff for Soho Radio mm. uh, and they did I think every Monday a, bit, a few bits of poetry mm, mm. Um, but I, I all I did with that was recorded it and then sent them mm. sent them it in a sound link, I think, and yeah. they put it on the radio. <laughs> my, my friend Tim um, used to do hospital radio around here, and I used to go in and I think even I, I've sort of done it on and off for about about twenty years because we, with gaps. And then around the time when we were doing shows and I was doing my videos, I started going back on there again, and I've got videos of 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 doing the shows. And then there might have been a little bit more of a gap. But then when I started doing the podcast, he started getting me back on again, and. We, we, I started. The weird thing was, I, I think hospital radio, perhaps because everyone's got their phone when they've got music on their phone, and the hospital radio probably is a bit of a a niche thing these days. Uh, in that pe- people, the, the 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 people listening to us, there was never it was never that that big numbers, even from the people in the hospital. But I was able to take. I couldn't use the music, obviously. But I could use our chat, and I would import that into a podcast, and mm. then we'd get better, better downloads from the podcast than we got on the night. So again, it was a nice way of preserving something that otherwise wouldn't be preserved. Yes, um, it, it, it is about that, isn't it? Keeping things. Yeah. Um, I mean, when we're long gone, we're still <laughs> going to be out there on the internet, yeah. and you know, we'll be discovered a thousand years after our death. <laughs> Uh, uh, he should have been famous. He is now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's nice to it's nice to have the. Uh, I often find that audio is as important to me as video or 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 photos. Certainly, I mean, yeah. video is different because it's a bit of both. But but um, a photo album is all very well, but. The people who aren't around now, I like that I've still got their voices recorded, because that brings them alive more than a picture does to me. Anyway, I, I don't know. Of course, yeah, you, you know, like my grandmother, my 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 father's mother, she did something for the university back in the sixties, and and she was she was in her eighties then, I think. She's long dead, but no one can find the recording, and it was memories of her childhood. Mm-hmm. And, and I wish I still not, I can still hear her voice. Yeah, yeah. You know, while she's drinking a macis and taking a snuff, yeah. and sitting on a chair with the old Auntie Macassar on. She was a very Victorian lady. Mm, mm. But um, that's it is right to, mm. to have them voices preserved. Photographs are very nice. Yeah, yeah. Happy memories, videos, yes. But sometimes you just want to listen to the, somebody's voice. Yeah. And I, I've been able to take the audio off some of those Sutton Park videos and put them on the podcast as well. When it's a conversation between people, it doesn't matter that there's, there were visuals as well. I mean, I can put the visuals on YouTube too, but um, my my great aunt, who I was very close to, I used to get her to... I don't even think she really understood... This was in the 90s, I don't think... And she was in her 80s. I don't think she really understood that we were recording. When, we, when I was pointing this thing at her and we were and we were acting... I don't think I think she probably just just <laughs> just kind of like okay whatever because I couldn't I couldn't really show her what we'd done because she never, she didn't even have a video player so I couldn't have I couldn't sort of play it back to her and say look that's what we that was just what we just did um, but I used to work stories around her and like say that she was what she used to be in a white witch in Sutton Park and and I just sort of and I otherwise I'd just film her in the garden with her cats and then I'd say oh auntie can you just say I I, I think he knows my, I wonder if he knows my secret do you think he does and and that's all she'd say and, and she wouldn't even know what that referred to and meanwhile I'd been I'd been ad living scenes about she, I know she doesn't like to talk about it so uh, so I do all the story stuff but I say I don't think I can't ask her directly about it because she won't want to speak about it <laughs> and, and now it looks like she knew like like it makes sense when you put it all together but it didn't make sense to her when she recorded it <laughs> uh, yes happy memories right? yeah um, I I, uh, yeah, I miss doing the um the, the shayati on location videos I watched them back quite recently and a I'm very pleased by how good quality that it was only a, a 
a photo camera that had a digital side to it but it blows up okay if you put it on like youtube on if you're watching on a big screen on a tv screen um it doesn't pixelate too much and uh, and i'm that's almost one of the things i'm most proud that i've got out there because i don't think i did a bad job at them i thought I'm, i did all right uh, um i don't know you're not supposed to praise yourself but i think they hold up okay i wouldn't be ashamed to show them to somebody i, I i've seen some uh, no i'm not going to tell lies I'm, but it always reminded me something somewhat like david attenborough <laughs> the one you know going through the undergrowth or in some <laughs> forest somewhere and then you're quite right the videos were very good yeah and and it was really I'm really glad that I was able to do so many of, of our actual shows. I, I I haven't really got in my head. I I guess, I think I stopped doing those in about 2013 because I I had um, I, I ended up in hospital with high blood pressure and I never really got back into them after that. And also another thing, the editing software which had been so easy became really difficult to use. So that again that put me off doing more of those. So I think possibly the shows we did from like. 2013 to 2016 i might have recorded some of them on audio but i think the the most recorded versions that that i did of our stuff was perhaps between that first one with gary groves and um and i say tw- mid I don't know, middle of 2013 or so um, well i was still in touch with gary groves mm-hmm. although matt roper as we know him yes 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 uh, and he's in america he he's, been, he's been over there almost about 2015 so, yes, yeah. and he, he's doing his uh, probably not the same act, but the same character in, in yeah. one of his acts. But then I see him dressed as a city gentleman and he's, and doing some sort of jazz cabaret and mm. oh, very, very nice. Yeah. Uh, I, I liked him, I like, but the Gary Groves persona, I thought that was fabulous. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's just totally, but he comes from that, <clears throat> that family of actors, if you like, yeah. his father being a mm. great comedian. Mm. And, uh, yeah, I liked Matt Roper. Yeah, it was it was nice um, how we sort of get people to. You know, sometimes we knew they were coming, and sometimes they just uh, like come out of the audience and. and, and uh, <laughs> sometimes they just pop in. <laughs> well, I was quite keen to sort of uh, you know say if anyone wants to come up and read, um, I, I, uh, I, I the trouble with um, the open mic nights I found when I first started doing it is that they were really long nights because there were so many people who wanted to read. Yes. Um, and the trouble is, if I was working the next day, I still had to get back to Woking and go to sleep and get up again at six o'clock. And, and, and if the shows were going on till like half ten, eleven, it did make for a long night just to read. It was sort of frowned on if you left early as well. If you ended up getting to read in the first half, say, um, and then you kind of slink, slinked away, it was, looked, it was looked down on. But, but it was... Yeah, and I, I, couldn't, I could never do that. I mean, I've, and I've been to gigs where I've been the last one on. Yes. And half the audience, more than half the audience has already gone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, but that's that's the life of a poet, Paul. You know uh, that. Yeah, yeah, it was funny because um didn't really get to know a lot of other poets other than yourself and 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 we sort of fitted in well with what we both sort of we don't write exactly the same sort of things but we we do have do use rhyme and i don't know if it's the same now but there has always been a bit of a, a snobbishness towards well didn't you write that great piece john <laughs> i'm only rhyming yes that's right yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah i forgot that so yeah. i mean and, and for me that's <laughs> gives me great pride to know you wrote that about a conversation yeah. we had yeah this conversation about the class system amongst poets. Yeah. In about 2012, I went to a, the folk festival in Broadstairs because I had friends who uh, who had a family down there and they, they had a poetry workshop thing where people read, read things and, and, uh, and I, I think I might have read jo- John I'm Only Rhyming and somebody accosted me <laughs> as I was coming out of the gentleman's loo and said, he was a poet as well, and he said he had the same problem where he some people looked down... Um, on it and when i went to america when i was visiting dominic in la uh, and i went to some places out there it, it was very much oh why do you use rhyme and i'm like well why wouldn't i it, it, it's odd it's kind of you know it, it's not something that's easy to do well you have to work hard to, to, to make it i don't i understand that maybe some people don't do it so well so they maybe have got people a bit of a bad or, or rhyming a bit of a bad rap but um you know the whole point is that you do work at it and make and try and make it uh, good and i don't necessarily do it all the time although i always feel like my non-rhyming poetry is more like prose and i'm not quite sure where the i i i, I get a bit, that's just my own 
hang up while I get myself a bit confused. Is it now? Now it's not rhyming. Is this actually a poem or oh, is this prose? It doesn't really matter, does it? Um, well, no, it doesn't. I went through a stage of writing hundred-word stories, and I think I used to slot them into my my set as well because I remember that not the face, but I remember the hundred-word stories. Yeah, you yeah. put a couple of out on your on your Facebook. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And one of my collections was very much full of those those stories. That just came to me over quite a short period of time. I wrote loads of them over about three or four months, and um, uh, and they work really well in in the set just to just to break things up a bit, or, uh, or or like if you just wanted to do a short thing before having a break or something. Or I also feel like perhaps I might have put some people's noses out of joint by the fact that I didn't pay my dues as far as some perhaps the London poetry scene was concerned in that I, I got a bit fed up of open mics and just thought, oh, sorry, I'm going to hire the, the venue and do my own shows. I've got enough material. Yeah, maybe I was supposed to struggle more and do... I wasn't really doing it to... I mean, just standing in front of an audience, even if half of them are your friends, is still that's still a big deal for me because, I mean, uh, it's a lot more safe behind the microphone doing a podcast. <laughs> but, um, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh, I mean, I think... It- I, it's how you measure a success. I mean, I thought the the poetry place evenings were brilliant. Yeah, they weren't. They weren't always full. No. But then no place is always full. No. And and, and it's not the venue or the poet. Look, the, the things at the house of Saint Barnabas. Mm. I think of all the ones that happened there, there was only one really full night. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, 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 I don't know. It's just it's just not nice to have done it and we I did find you and, and some of the others and and we were able to collaborate so we did have our little our, our little gang and um, I often find that uh, you know no, nobody nobody who was established at the Poetry Cafe ever came to one of our shows to see whether we were any good so how would they know whether we were any good um, <laughs> so yeah. it's a very funny sort of I found that before with people who do like friends who are sort of actors who you go to their things but they don't always see it as a, a two way thing um, and it's like, I'm sort of like well I mean it would be nice if you came and saw something that I was doing but uh, but there is that um, I can't say that would worry me you know mm. if I go and see someone and they don't come and see me tough luck they missed out yes they have yeah. this is this is my my take on that yeah yeah for, for most, you know, any uh, probably gigs you've done, and someone afterwards when when they, oh, I really like your poetry, and that's what you get. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's no, there's no. Oh, what did you mean by this line? Mm. You know, I wish somebody would ask me that. Yeah, yeah. and I was there. Well, that line means a total destruction of everything you've ever loved, and <laughs> yet you rise from the ashes. Yeah. Which, which is just, you know, but people don't want to hear that. They they want their own their own uh, take on what you've read or mm-hmm. written mm-hmm. and that's the way it should be I think really because you can read my poetry and think it means one thing and mm-hmm. someone else thinks it means something entirely different mm-hmm. the same with your poetry yeah. I had a problem go- right, going back before I even started doing my books in that I'd written a load of poems when I was in sixth form and some of them most, some of them I'd, I kind of yeah not so great one or two of them, like there was one about the dinosaurs becoming extinct. Uh, I still used to perform that and enjoy it and, and still thought, yeah, that, that's OK. I like that one. Um, but in the sort of early noughties, before, just before I started putting the books together, I was like, I have, I have these poems and I don't know if they, I like them or I don't like them. I, well, secretly I do like them, but I don't know. So I actually wrote a, a character in a book I was writing who was a poet who didn't like the sort of poems that she was expected to write by her audience. Uh, and that was my way of kind of, s- of sneakily getting the poems in and kind of not, not committing as to whether I liked them or not, um, even though I secretly did like them. <laughs> and then I just thought, oh, sorry, don't be silly, just put, just do your own stuff, particularly when self-publishing came about. But, uh, um, yes, Lulu. I think I use Lulu. Yeah. My wife did, and she... Yeah. Because I've got the patience for it. Well, it's got very complicated. I, I did release a book with my friend Nick, who you'll have met at one of uh, some of my shows. Uh, Nick and I wrote a we wrote an ongoing story. Well, I, I got to the stage where I was still writing, but I was writing script novels. 
So they were. I I never enjoyed writing the long descriptions. Uh, I I enjoyed writing the dialogue and the story, having the story. So I sort of wrote novels, but in the form of a script that I wasn't expecting to get performed. But I I quite enjoyed reading them that way. And um, well, Nick, Nick said to me that he was going through a patch of because he does, he writes, but he hadn't written for a long time and he was a bit stuck. And I said, well, why don't we do something we'd done years before, write a chapter each and and bounce it back between us, um, which we did. But what with COVID and stuff, it kind of got to the stage where I felt that he knew what was going on. And and, and I sort of said to him, I think you need to finish this because I've little, I've a little bit lost track of of where you're going with this. And I think you know, and I don't want to spoil it. So, um, But then when we came to proofread it and put it on Lulu, I discovered they changed a lot of what was very easy and they made it very complicated and it took another friend of mine to help us actually get it on there and put it out there but um but that yeah so i, I guess i have released i have published something in the last year or so but um that was more of a joint project and it's and it was a, a bit of a hard slog to get it out um, well during covid we had nothing else to do did we no obviously i wrote my wife was here my my stepson was here and we were just indoors for, I don't know how long I was furloughed for, probably about six months, eight months. Then we went back to work and then we were off work again for another three months. Yeah. Uh, but we, we were very lucky. I, I had COVID after COVID had gone, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, uh, one bad night and, and three or four days where I felt shitty and, and then I was all right. Yeah. Mm. And you know, I'm sure you had your in- injections. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it was they injected, but it never worked. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, we all say when when we were kids and you had these jabs in your arms and polio, diphtheria, it was for life. Mm. And now it's like for five minutes. I've got I've got some off the doctor now. Come come for your flu vaccine and your <clears throat> this other um, COVID vaccine. Mm. Mm. And. Uh, and mind you, I also got something off the doctor saying that my cervical smear test was ready to be done. Uh, and then another message later on saying, please disregard the previous message. <laughs> oh dear. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this Hugh Paul, you found the humour in a lot of things, yeah. certainly in your poetry. Yeah. And, and pathos, I like that word, pathos. I always thought he was one of the three musketeers, which I think he might have been. Yeah. But I like that word, because there is that in your poetry too. Yeah. Well, and the one, the one, uh, the one I often, I don't often think of it, but I do think of it. I, I, <laughs> I will eat pies. Yes. And, uh, and then, you know, you read that and you just want to sing it. Well, that was one of the things I wanted to do a bit more of where I take, that was a good one because it took me out of my usual rhyming structure. I took the rhyming structure of an existing song and then completely, like, wrote my own words over the top to to the even to the same rhyming structure and you could he- still hear it was what the song it was based on in yes. a way and um but it was nothing to do with the original song in another way so and i kind of almost like to do that a bit more take a couple of Beatles songs and, and, fi- and find out what rhyming structure was used and write something in, in just to kind of get me out of of what i my instinctive structure but um um whereas i used to get inspired for a poem now something really silly might inspire a podcast episode because i have these various characters and and there's there's a particular character called yeti uncle john who he's a he's very much a a ducker diver he's always got a sort of a a scheme on the go uh he's very uh he's very vain and and thinks a lot of himself but also kind of hates to think that anyone might think that and um and, and he's just got he, he invents ridiculous inventions he he keeps he keeps magpies as a pet rather than pigeons because pigeons is too sort of i don't know everyone's got pig, keeps pigeons so he has to go and choose a bird that's not a good bird to keep for a pet but that but then the pigeons end up he teaches them to paint and they start forging like Andy Warhol pictures <laughs> and it, it's all it's very it's surreal it's great word dimension it's, it, it, but it but uh, you know, sometimes it can be just something that somebody says to me, and and I think, oh, I must do an episode where Yeti Uncle John invents computers made out of cheese because he thinks it's a great idea, or uh, you know, or 
it, I can't remember what my dad my dad said something recently and I and I just went I went and said to my mum I'm going to turn that into a podcast episode and and it could just be a tiny little kernel of an idea and I can just blow it up into so I've still got a forum for the the silly ideas that I used to turn into poems um, on the podcast uh, I mean I'm doing an episode at the moment where it's supposed to be from the viewpoint of the magpies that yet Uncle John keeps in his magpie hut. Uh, and then I'm just doing about four, four or five different sketches. So there's like Yeti Uncle John being taught to dance by another character or or me coming over with a casserole, uh, a leftover casserole, you know, doing something nice. But somehow he manages to turn it into, oh, you bought me this. Oh, but it doesn't have that. Oh, you know, and it, it becomes like, just, just a minute. What, what, I was doing something nice and now I feel like I've offended you. And different characters interacting. I find he's a very good character to sort of have other characters react to. Um, and I hope they're as funny as I find them to, to, to improvise. But um, I don't know. As you say, doing it for yourself. So, um. but this is nice. It's, um, but it, it is nice that people do like the stuff you write. Yeah. And funnily, I don't know if you find this. They tend to like the stuff that you think's the worst stuff. Mm. And, and I think, oh, they really love this excellent bright. And I look at it and I think. I sat on the edge of the bed <laughs> and scribbled out in two minutes. And <laughs> yeah. well, it's it's obviously what people get from it that yeah. that counts. And and certainly, I still get the same the same buzz in writing for myself yeah. that I always did. I I tell you one thing I like about doing. You, I mean, it, it, it's it's good. Um, I do love that thing about poetry when you sit down and you write something and it's ready to perform a few hours after you started it. Um, but I, I used to find that doing the books, uh, you'd write the book quite quickly, but then the formatting and the proofreading, and the, that's what take, would take the, t- the, the long time. And uh, I nearly went into proofreading uh, when I stopped working at the library, but um, it's just not for me. I just, read, particularly reading the sort of things that you'd be expected to look at, they're just, you just find yourself falling asleep. And, and, and proofreading isn't like... I thought proofreading was it, it's so complicated and there's lots of it's more like shorthand there's all sorts of things involved in proofreading that meant i think yes yeah, for somebody else not for me um where, where i was doing a podcast i i can record it and although i do put quite a lot of editing time into it the turnaround is a lot quicker than putting a book out or um so it's more like the turnaround of putting out one of my youtube videos back in the day perhaps so it's nice to have things constantly going out and um you know this year i've been meeting a lot of new people whereas i might have been a bit shy and asking and saying would you like to be on my podcast i've started to sort of go would you you know would you and and mostly they've said yes or we found a way around maybe they've just done a small cameo or maybe they've um including people in other countries as well so it's been nice having voices from uh from other countries and people who turn turn out are really enthusiastic and they want to come back and um, and I, I always sort of found that when I did my poetry that every year was different I was always sort of thought um, if I find I'm just treading the same ground there was always something new and you, you know a chance to appear on the radio or or, or poetry cafe show or that I, or I'm meeting new people I always felt like it, it, it was a forward step all the time and, and I found that with the podcast because I've now nearly done it for eight years or next year will be eight years and I don't feel like it's finishing any time soon because it's still new all the time um but it could be very it could you could just keep it and have the same four people that you rotate around talking to or but i i i hope that i keep trying to look look for new voices because i can get a bit nervous about asking people if they'll do stuff um, um, well i don't i don't see why you should paul i mean it's, uh, people like to hear their own voice yeah, yeah. And they do, and they yeah. like other people to hear their voice. Yeah. But the, pod, the podcast, really, it's a privilege, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I mean, the po- but the podcasting world is as kind of weird as the poetry world in that you get people who, who are very kind and very collaborative, and there are people who want to stay at the top of the pile and don't want to. Um, yeah, it, um, it's the same thing everywhere, wherever you go, um, and you just have to find the people that are your gang and. Uh, and I've, I've, I've done that, but... Uh. It's, it's weird, it is, though, you're quite right. It's people who are at the top, of, but, you know, the top changes all the time. Yeah, 
Mm. You know, you get some old old stalwarts up there. <laughs> you know, people die off. You these new kids, these new poets, some brilliant poets out there. Mm. And uh, I wish I'd gone into it and, and made it something to do when I was younger. Uh, that's, I think that is not a regret. I just wish I'd done it. I think and I know I've written most of my life. I threw most of it away. So uh, I'm going to read one or two pieces from my 2019 book, Pieces of Shy Yeti, which never got um, properly introduced um, either on the podcast or in a poetry uh, cafe setting. Um, uh, some of them I've probably read before, but uh, this one's called Autumn Won't Happen. Autumn Won't Happen. Autumn is cancelled this year. Close your eyes, close them tightly. Want it enough and maybe it'll be so. The leaves will not fall. The seas will not swell and grow angry. The birds will not migrate to warmer climes. The clouds will not grow dark. Then rain. Autumn won't happen. And let's not even mention winter. It's nothing more than a vicious rumour. A myth concocted simply to scare the children. The murmured gossip of insignificant ghosts. Autumn won't happen. Autumn is cancelled. This and every year. Lock all your doors. Close every window. Sit inside, denying its existence. Close your eyes and believe it. Shout it out loud. Summer is here. Summer is here. Summer is here. Autumn won't happen. That's the end of the matter. This one's called Bite. She has bite. She's got pizzazz. Well, that's not something... Every no one has. She's got the wow. She never quits. With fake tattoos and showbiz glitz. She's got style like few before her. The paparazzi do so adore her. Fortune is her bestest friend. Fame may suffocate her in the end. Unless that is she kills it first. Confronts it hard and does her worst. You need to pause, be at the ready. Should she approach, be sure, stay steady. Safe face, don't let her see you're shaking. Pretend it's selfies that you're taking. Then saunter up when she's not looking, when she's asleep or maybe cooking. Just make out that you like her fashion. Show she's in charge, admire her passion. Folk laugh at her whene'er they see her, but every one of them would love to be her. She has bite, but she's not a tramp. She is shameless, but she's not a vamp. When she controls you, you'll be left reeling. Your head will spin. Enjoy the feeling. This one's called Chubby Cherub. He's a chubby cherub and he's rather quaint. But he kissed me quick last Sunday, so he ain't no saint. He's been sending me rude emails when he thinks no one can see. But I've retweeted them to Mother with a certain psychopathic glee. He's completely unaware. He thinks that no one even guesses. You know he turns invisible just to look up ladies' dresses. Chubby cherub, oh so wicked, with awful thoughts you are infested. And if you keep on doing that, you're going to get yourself arrested. He's a chubby cherub, but he's rather bad. He's been mud wrestling with llama, unshamed and lycra clad. He's been surfing quite symmetric on the internet, it seems. But he is spreading tittle-tattle and sharing pornographic dreams. Though his halo stays in place... In all his dreadful schemes does revel. He's neither innocent nor kind, just one hard-hearted little devil. Chubby cherub, oh so evil, he will rarely show his feelings. He'll give you looks, he'll make you blush, knee-deep in double dealings. He's a chubby cherub, others say he's cute, a sweet-hearted little soul who has been learning how to shoot. He will take his tiny bow, he'll act responsible, not stupid. He will not use a poisoned arrow, he's all for love, this budding cupid. And yet he feasts on human woes, collecting every broken heart. He will recycle all your fears and turn them into works of art. Chubby cherub, oh so awful, a winged vampire of the night. He may flutter down upon your shoulder, he'll kiss you quick, or sometimes simply bite. This one's called Dirty Old Town. Dirty old town loved by no one, although those who live there profess a certain fondness. Out of stubbornness or nostalgia... Nobody likes to hear their home dissed by strangers. Only the locals are allowed to do that. 
In truth, they mourn the memory of the town they grew up in. Pretty much all of them at some time tried their hardest to escape it. When the time came, very few were successful and most remained. Like the town itself, their paint soon began to peel, their fragile hopes and jealous dreams rusting to nothing, every day walking the same streets which seem to have been set there forever, that cannot be expelled by just the blink of an eye that exists within. Those who left, are talked of often, became figureheads of life lived vicariously. And yet, in truth, those who departed will all too soon end up calling some other dirty old place home, too mortified to ever admit that they can never escape the truth of their origins. This one's called Down the Cap Cafe. If your tail is feeling frisky, then you know the place to be. Come on down the Cat Cafe, catnip on tap to sniff for free. Oh, for there really is no option, nor a better place to eat, if you've a rather eager purr and one wet nose for feline feet. Just comb your whiskers till they shine, be smiling wide to show you're proud. Midnight at the Cat Cafe, you've got to stand out from the crowd. If your paws are feeling itchy and there's a problem to be solved, get thee down the Cat Cafe and soon your woes will be resolved. Any other choice you make, it's going to seem a lot more plain. Just a restaurant with food, not some fantastic cat domain. It's something everyone should know, a way of being that's becoming. So do get down the cat cafe to hear the kitty choir humming. If your ears are feeling perky, if you're bottling the blame, just get on down the cat cafe as bold as brass and without shame. There is no harm in heading west. You must just get into position. There are important things to do. This is a cake collecting mission. Not that too many cats eat cake. It isn't good for Kitty's health. I'll just get down the cat cafe. I was just thinking about myself. If your fur is feeling fluffy, then you know the place to go. Just head on down the cat cafe. Sit in the window there on show. Those passing by, they need to see the type of client that frequents this extra special restaurant. For it attracts a cat with sense. It is a place for those with starve, not for mockies who like boozing. At home there down the cat cafe... In pride of place, oh, so amusing. Dear, oh dear. This one's called Getting Lost in Venice. There is nothing better, at least for me, than getting lost in Venice, than allowing the city to play games with me, allowing it to lay out its twists and turns for me, allowing it to trick me into going down dead ends, or simply taking wrong turnings that only take me deeper into the maze, leaving me facing gargoyle festoon gates where none shall pass, leaving me floundering, with only the canal there before me, teasing me with its waters. If you want to go that way, kid, then you're going to have to swim. But I'm sure, I'm certain that this was the way to the supermarket. Only yesterday, only yesterday, I, I'm pretty certain that this path led to the bridge and then to the museum. How can the streets transform like that? How can a canal suddenly just appear here, where I'm sure none was before? What's wrong with me? Why is this happening? Of course, all this confusion is watched by the locals, staring through cracks in the curtains, peering over balconies as they encourage their dogs to bark at me. Really, it's not something to take personally. It's just the way that Venice likes to play. It loves to toy with its tourists and explorers. It's a cheeky city. It does it because it can. Let yourself be caught up in it. Allow it to spin you around like a small child at a birthday party. This is one game of blind man's buff that you will enjoy. Just don't lose your footing unless you want an early bath. Those who resist Venice always regret it. Some are still out there wandering the streets with beards down to their knees, resisting only on a diet of leftover pizza and half-melted gelato. Venice can be mean like that, but only to those who disrespect or deserve it. So be on your best behaviour. There's only one thing for it really, and you know it. As they say in Venice, ah, just get lost. I'm not sure I said, um, this collection... Uh, pieces of Shy Yeti. It was actually a collection of poems that first appeared on my blog between about 2015 and 2017, uh, which is why some of them do appear in my greatest hits. Anyway, let's do one or two more. Glamrock Vampire 74. Come on, come on, you'll hear them scream. Glamrock Vampire 74. What surprises may well lurk in store? He skulks about a ghoul in waiting. Who is this guy you're newly dating? So do you know quite who he is? Shake him up and see him fizz. He has a quite hypnotic gaze, a winning smile that shines for days. He'll claim his star was rudely stolen, but he ripped his look off Mr. Boland. Come on, come on, you'll hear them shout. Clamrock Vampire 74, he'll rouse the teens and start a war. 
blood-sucking fiend, weird funky singer, sure puts his victim through the ringer, a killing spree won't make him bitter, rips out their throats all doused in glitter, too soon for new wave, too soft for punk, too late for prog and all that junk, this doesn't stop him acting bendy, dressed as a bat, still rather trendy, come on, come on, you'll hear them bellow, glam rock vampire 74, won't always bite, but he'll surely score. A dance floor beast, he hunts his prey. The disco yeti, he keeps away. Though on the stage there's none left crying. A trail remains, the blood still drying. But no one sees the stains that linger. A severed toe, one nibbled finger. The mess is blamed on drag queens fighting. The killer's gone, it's quite exciting. Come on, come on, you'll hear them chant. Glam rock vampire 74 might one day show up at your door that was that was inspired by a t-shirt that a friend of mine made which i think was called glam rock vampire 74 and uh, although my birthday is in 73 i did really like the t-shirt and it inspired me to write that piece this is called i don't know you at all i don't know you at all i'm facing a stranger i'm facing a myth my sweet flower arranger of my muscle bound prince won't you just come and steal me come and save me from hell come on ravish me feel me you know why we are here by the rules of attraction, so just turn down the lights, give me love, give me action. Oh, good grief, give me you, I'm a puddle of lust, I'm a bundle of nerves, to me fall into dust. I'm completely in awe, I'm actually shaking, I don't know you at all, but now my interests are waking. I don't know you at all, you are ever so busy, when you ask for the time I go into a tizzy, I go into a spin, because to me you are speaking, I'm afraid I might drool, that my brains might be leaking. I can't put into words, I'm so suddenly shy. You're asking me things, but I can't even reply. I'm repeating myself, such a vandal of grammar. Can you not hear my heart? Is it starting to stammer? See me watching you breathe, see me worship each move. I don't know you at all, but you have nothing to prove. I don't know you at all, made a dreadful decision, made a way awful choice that has led to division. But when I flutter my lids, will I find me some luck? I am not chicken-hearted, no, you won't hear me cluck soon be back on my feet you can say what you like i'll not put up with your moods hell i might go on strike won't you make up your mind what you'd like to achieve where your heart and your chest not placed there on your sleeve i've been studying your moves and opinion is forming i don't know you at all but your embrace is so warming i don't know you at all but that almost appeals i'm starting to like just how soothing it feels i'm starting to love you you're so hard to ignore you're a figure of fun, you're the one I adore. You're the one who can send me to faraway places with a smile that disarms, one that doesn't leave traces. Can you not hear my heart as it beating out morse, sending outrageous texts like some turbulent force? Please do make up your mind, let your presence be felt. I don't know you at all, but you made my heart melt. This one's called Jealous Blooms. Show off, cry the other flowers in the garden. Shameless hussy. So yellow, they cry. My eyes, my eyes, it hurts my eyes. I just think it's cheap looking, call out others. Floral floozy. Clearly trying to outdo the roses. Some chance, sneer others. To choruses of, let them try. Nothing outdoes our roses. The rosebuds blush gratefully. They know they are facing stiff competition. Look, how disgusting. Covered in insects, they say. Like that's a bad thing. The insects flock over the yellow plant because they love it, they worship it, they want to help pollinate it. The bees rub their knees in utter anticipation. With friends like that you cannot help but feel popular. Kiss me, kiss me, kiss me, commands the yellow plant. Ladybirds come ravish me, stumble all over me. When such things happen it's best to block out the petal-waving haters, to simply forget all about the other jealous blooms in the garden. Why should I feel ashamed for being beautiful? Why should I feel bad for attracting so many admirers? The answer is... The answer is you shouldn't, reply the bees in unison. Time is short. One has to take any praise when it comes. There will always be someone who you will make sneeze. Enjoy all your happy memories, for in the end the compost heap beckons. Oh, those were some particular yellow flowers that I encountered in Kent. They really did stand out. I've always admired how you can just remember your... I mean, I think 
I think my brain must have been stuffed full of rubbish long before I even started doing performing my poetry because I, I've never had the confidence to or, or I'm pretty much certain that I couldn't remember a whole set worth of poetry without having it in front of me and I think I don't think I'd even have put myself out there if I felt that I was going to have to rely on my own memory but you you, you just go up on the there and just remember your piece and if I make a mistake I laugh it off and, and yeah. that's when you know I am not perfect I've never have been I probably never will be and, and I, I've been up there and I've forgotten halfway oh sorry I've forgotten that one but here's another one <laughs> yeah. and you go straight into something <laughs> uh, and then later on you think how did I forget that because it's straight there in your mind again do you have anything you could share with us for the, for the listeners you know I, I, be, I write about everything love, hate, war, peace sex not getting a boner, getting a boner, too much Viagra, not enough Viagra, that kind of thing. Yeah. All in a very pleasant way, of course. And I write about getting old, mm. which is a bitch, really. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I started off with this line in, in one place I read in Hackney, because it was local, and I thought, Sunday night, very nice, finishes at nine o'clock. I haven't been back, I haven't been back since, because it finished at half past ten, and it's too late for me. So I started off with this, and I don't know what I called it, but would you like? It's only four or five lines. Yes, please. Okay. I used to grow red cabbages, but now I just grow old. You see, now I've forgotten what the next line is. <laughs> but, but that could I be used the next, to grow red the cabbages, but now I just grow old. Hey, it's got its advantages. Old is easier to grow. You just sit back in the chair, kick off your shoes and let yourself go. But I used to grow red cabbages. And that's it. And, and this is about... Really, it's, it's about life, isn't it? It's about that I used to be able to do this. Well, I used to be able to grow red cabbages. You know, it could be anything. But it applies to everyone. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I like it. I, I really like that piece. And other people, I don't think other people got it because, um, he laughed. when I read that first line, this guy, and I looked here, but why are you fucking laughing at <laughs> Excuse the language. But anyway, it's how it grabs people. Yeah. But yes, uh, would you like me to read one? Because I wrote yeah. one this morning. Oh, absolutely. No, yes. I didn't wrote it. Yes, Actually, I thought of you this morning, which is very unusual, Paul. Don't get too excited here. Yeah. Because uh, this came up in a memory... And uh, I'm just going to pick it up now. Yeah, it came up in a memory, and it was 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, I wonder if I did that at Paul's poetry gig. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I don't think I did. Mm. It's just going to come up here on Facebook on my little pads. Wonderful things, these mini computers. <laughs> but, you know, some of the pieces, my wife likes to fiddle around with computers and she must have filmed something because she came to one of your gigs with me. Yeah. But she, well, you know, when I waltzed around the stage, she had me, she put other words of another poem onto those actions. And it worked really well, actually. Yeah. She's very clever like that. Right, we're here now. So this piece, and I always put it down as a happy birthday piece, so happy 10th to The Crying of Simon. This bedroom door a tombstone for the room that lay inside and hidden there away from sight, light years of light sat in the dust. The wardrobe, old and oaken, spoke of hanging, haranguing coats of cow-eyed skin and trousers that crept up like weeds within. <laughs> no party time for Simon Lime, a product of a bygone age, faded pencil on a faded page, he stumbled. And deep down in the rage that simmered far below, he would know who sent the clocks that dismantled him, that wound him up, that bound him in the past. Held tight and fast, though tired at last, he settled down upon the old stuffed chair, where the antimacassar kept the oil slick on his thinning hair. And here were shadows shuffled on the widow of his window sill. He sits there still and thinking thoughts like these, praying in some long-forgotten diocese where bishops wander ill at ease among the congregation. Nations stand and fall among the shuffling shadows up on Simon's wall. He doesn't care no more. He carves the tombstone for another door and life goes on. And that was like 10 years ago. And mm -hmm. usually I can remember what gave me the idea. And the only thing, <laughs> the only thing I can think of was a chap who used to do some tours with me over South London, mm -hmm. whose name was Simon. 
and he was having some problems with his partner. And uh, of course, you, you get talking, oh, well, this is happening, this is happening. Mm. Uh, and I might have just said, well, it's just another tombstone. And, and that piece came from that. Yeah. And sometimes it is the, just little little phrases, and, and sometimes it's, what other phrases, it's phrases that other people say, and sometimes <laughs> it's, it's phrases that you've, you've said yourself, or, or, or little things that are just being funny in, a, in an email to somebody, and then I've kind of gone, Oh, that's too good just for that email. I, I'm just going to take that. Back. I, I, then, yeah. I, like, I often screenshot my own emails where I think, oh, that's 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 quite that's quite clever. I could do something with that. Yeah, I, I know exactly where you're at with that. Uh, but, uh, I, I write and I put it out straight away, and then later on, if I read it, I say, well, oh, I could have done that slightly differently, but it's too late now. Yeah. And, and like if it comes up in ten years' time, I might edit it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not against doing that. I still find mistakes in my because what I do is I, I try and do two or three episodes a year. Um, so recently, I had a 20th anniversary of one of my books, and partly I was performing the poems, partly they've been around for ages or they were proofread at the time, and that you go and look at the book and suddenly and, and there's a typo. Well, why didn't oh, I see no. that typo 20 years ago? <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm sure they they creep in after the book's published or something. It's, uh, can you, uh, sorry, can you hear the wind whistling? Uh, I sort of can, but we've got a train going past at the same time. Ah, <laughs> so, yeah, it's a bright day, but windy. Yeah. Well, so, uh, anyway, about everything else, life goes on. Yeah. Uh, and you've got, is it rheumatism, arthritis? Yeah, I mean, I'm still at the stage where they're seeing me about it and trying me on different pills and things and I'm not working anyway because the 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 library got decided to use that as a reason to get rid of me after 20 years um oh. but I think I would have I think I would have had to have gone if they hadn't have pushed me I would have had to have gone because I I couldn't do the commuting at the moment I, I could on a good day but I don't know when my good days and bad days are going to be yeah. I go back to my parents a lot more which is a good thing because my dad's 85 and my mum's 80 so and they they're very independent, but I I feel I you know it's good to go and stay with them for a week. Um, but I think my mum's glad to see me. She doesn't have to put up with my dad's dad jokes so so much if I'm there. Um, but, um, uh, and I still have friends in Salisbury that I I see and some of the ones that used to come up to the shows and things. So. Do you see? Ian? I was just going to ask. Do you see Ian? Um, yeah, and and, and I see Nick, um, who who. Um, I mean, I, I always, I've done lots of writing with him over the years, and uh, we're long-term friends. So, and, I, and, and Callum, he, he no longer lives with with me here because his mum got dementia during. Well, it became obvious she had dementia during lockdown. He had yeah, to yeah, get, this, yeah. Uh, this is uh, Julie, Julie's mum, isn't yeah, it? That's right. Yeah. As well, so, yeah, yeah, she, yeah. she is. She is now in a home, so. Cat Callum isn't having to sort of. Well, he's still living at that house because they need to sort it out. But uh, but I still see him and and we we sort of in lockdown we sort of zoomed every couple of weeks just to to keep in touch and stuff. And, yeah. and I've got him being on the podcast because we always like quizzes. So we did, we we have a chat for an hour and then we kind of do some quizzes for a bit. Um, and then I put that on on the podcast. Um, so yeah, he's become part of the the sort of podcast landscape as well so people have heard his voice in America as well and plus Dealey the cat he's now a podcasting celebrity <laughs> is, that, is the cat still alive? he is he's 19 next we, week I'm saying because you seem to have had that cat an awful long time yeah he's 19 next year, next week oh my um, god what are you feeding him on? <laughs> I don't know uh, he's, he's getting to a very cuddly stage where he wants to be with you all the time although um, although he's not at the moment he's under my duvet but um, but it's good because I'm, I'm here so we can sort of spe- spend all our best time together. So I, I, I try and have him in the podcast. Um, like, so if he suddenly wanders in while I'm recording, I'll just start saying yes. Well, I know, dearly, just a minute. I'm in the, bit, I'm in the middle of recording, and and I, you know, I, I just, yeah. it's just nice to have. Some people would edit him out, but I want him to be there because he's part of my lan- my landscapes. So. Yes, that's true, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, like life just goes on, and and in funny ways, really. I mean. We've, we've all had our moments, Paul, haven't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and the thing is, to, uh, I write some very miserable sounding poetry. <laughs> Even I know, you know, really dark and full of death. Yeah. But 
Crazy. I'm not like that at all. I'm I'm yeah. quite happy. Go. That's my wife. I'm <laughs> yeah. very calm and happy. Go lucky. Mm -hmm. Whereas my wife might worry about something. I, I might. Well, let's wait and see what happens. Yeah. And it is that. And I think to some extent, I've never. I don't think I've ever seen a post of yours where you moan seriously about okay. anything. Yeah, I don't like doing. I don't like moaning. I turn it into. A, uh, sometimes I turn it into the moan of a character on my podcast. But, yeah. but, but I won't say it's me moaning. I'll say it's it's your Uncle John moaning about something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose that's one way of getting it across. It's just uh, it's just interesting how we met. Up, thanks, I'm uh, really thanks to Julie. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, I remember we sat down and, and you were introduced to me as the shy yeti. Yes, yeah. I don't think you. I, obviously, she must have said Paul at some point. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, and uh, well, you're up there, aren't you? You're up there amongst the stars, really. In in our in our world, mm -hmm. you're up amongst the stars. No. Of course, you are, Paul. You've done you've done an awful lot. You certainly helped me to build my confidence up mm -hmm. with those poetry things. And whatever you say, ah, oh, you get up and, and read. Is you know yourself, it's never that simple. No. Even when I'm recording for the podcast for an episode, uh, like reading the poems, I I seem to make more, far more mistakes now than I ever did when... I'm sure I tri tripped over the few words when we were at the Poetry Cafe, but not as much as I... If, 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 I mean, the great thing is I can edit it and it sounds like I did it perfect first time. <laughs> but, um, uh -huh. but yeah, it's... it's, it's uh, I, I think, gosh, if I was at the Poetry Cafe now, would I be making as many mistakes? Or maybe the pressure of being on stage makes you focus more than sitting in the bedroom, sitting in your bedroom recording. I don't know. But, uh. um, I, I do some just on, uh, you know, like using the computer on the sound file mm. and, and put them out on SoundCloud. Or I yeah. call it something different now. But I haven't done, I really, I haven't done many over the years on that, 20 or 30, maybe 50 pieces. Just when I, when I, oh, I know, I'll, I'll read this one and record it mm. in the bedroom, yeah. put it out. Yeah, I mean, I did, well, that, I did that a few times before I sort of got into the podcasting. I did a couple of little albums that I recorded and I put them on, uh, that was on Sound something or other. And um, they, they still exist, which is nice. And um, yeah, it, it, uh, it's, it's good to do that. And I also recently discovered that people like to listen to podcasts on YouTube. Where, which I thought think of as being a visual thing, but apparently, apparently people like using it in that way. So I've started to migrate all of my episodes onto YouTube, and you know I've got a lot. So I'm doing it in batches, but they are getting viewed out there. So if that's the easier way for some people to listen, then fine, I'll I'll make it available. But uh, um, I mean, my podcast doesn't get big numbers compared to a lot of other shows, but. I think the people who do listen are, uh, keep on coming back and I do get to meet new people who, so, you know, it's, it's definitely a positive thing. Yes, well, I always think that I don't get as many views as John Cooper Clark. <laughs> yeah. But if I, if I look at it this way, the people who view me and the people who view the people who view me and, and go down the line, mm. I do get more than him in the end. Yeah. 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 You know, it's, it, you know, it's, yeah, I'm not counting my life in Facebook likes. No. I'm really, I'm not, because I know how shallow that is. No. And also, with the, with the podcasting, there are lots of celebrities, you know, real TV celebrities who do who do podcasts. But really, they should just, you know, it's they don't make podcasts in the way that my band of podcasters do, where we do all the editing, we do everything. You know, a famous person sits down, does the show. Uh, yes. and they've got a guest that's also a celebrity who they may or may not know but, or maybe that person has a book to sell and then it gets edited for them and, and put out but I like to think, you know, podcasting is much more of a homegrown thing in my mind it's something that you do and I, I would hate to give my files over to somebody else and say, edit that I, 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 it's, the whole thing is, is the thing for me even though um, editing can be a chore um, yeah, I want I want to do everything like like with my books i i wanted to do everything i didn't want to just write the poems and then hand it over to somebody else to do the, the, the putting the book together um 
no, no you, you're quite right. The, this this thing with podcasts, the, the, the rawness in anything is its selling point. When it becomes, uh, what, what shall we say, industrialised, when it becomes uh, all the same, mm-hmm. you know it's, it's professional, you know, it's, as you say, mixed in a studio, edited in a studio, put out on as a podcast, and it's bland, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever it is, mm-hmm. because there's no... There's no edge to it anymore. Yeah. People might listen in to you or watch you and, and think, oh, when's he going to fall? <laughs> when's he going to fall? And, and sometimes that's the best part, and I'm not knocking any part mm. of any show, mm. but sometimes the best part is when it's real like that and you fuck up your lines. Did yeah, I say which, that? Sorry, I mean, fluff your lines. Which, 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 which I like to keep for outtakes at the end of the episode anyway. So. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think that's really... I think that is... Probably the best thing, yeah. because the same perfection is just a dream, you know, it's not, it's yeah. never achieved. You know, you still find the same sort of, like we did with the poetry, you, you know, people saying, oh, a podcast should be like this, or a podcast should be this length, or it should be, oh, what are you doing characters for, you, you podcast like, and, and you're like, no, 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 that's what your podcast is like, and your podcast is half an hour or whatever. I'm going to do an episode that's three hours this episode and the next episode will be two and a half and then the next one will be 55 yeah. minutes. I, I don't want a, I don't want to fit into some sort of... Um, or be told what to do or how to do it. I, I, um, and why shouldn't I do characters? And, you know... And, and you think, do these people not realise that what they think is the be on end or isn't what I would want my show to be like? It's fine for their show, but do what I want to do. Like I always said about poetry, do what you write, what you want to write. Don't be told what you should write. It's, That's the third point. Yeah, it's, now, it's, Paul, I'm going to cut this short yes, now because no, no. I have to go and have something to eat, I think. Sure, sure. 15, 18. Yeah. Well, actually, we're well, lucky it's not caught short because my daughter was supposed to come down today. Yeah. But she said about she said about two o'clock. But I know when she says two, she means four. <laughs> but she phoned at one and said, "Oh, I can't make it today, so that's uh, fine." Yeah. But if I can ever do anything regarding sure. your podcast, yeah, we'll do it again. We'll do it again. We can't wait. So we can't wait for another seven years. That's ridiculous. We have to. No, it's been a long time, and I can say that about everyone. You yeah. know, and, and I'm like a lot of people say, "Oh, they're doing well on Facebook," you know. Yeah. I, <laughs> And I think, when was the last time I saw him? Fucking hit Matt Roper, the mm. same amount of time. I've yeah. seen him all them years. Yeah. And he's been backwards and forwards in London. Yeah. And I'm probably due to my laziness as well, of course, yeah, because yeah. you get older, you get lazier. Yeah. Well, it's been really good, I'm sure. I'm sure this will... I can see that the sound bars are... Because the iPhone's really good for picking up and 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 the speaker's very close to it. yeah i'm sure it'll come, it's going to come out fine so we'll do something else soon that'll be cool i hope so paul yeah it's been really good um, to catch up with you anyway perhaps i'll read from one of your books i have <laughs> that would be cool it's, it's always weird when people you hear other, i've only had it a couple of times where you've heard other people reading your own stuff and and it's like Ooh, <laughs> it's kind of different. <laughs> but, uh, well, of course it's different, yeah. yeah. All right, then, Paul, I okay. will speak to you soon. Take speak care you of soon. yourself. Thank you very much. Right? You take care. And, and if you're going to pet the cat, give it a pet from me. I will do, yeah. <laughs> well, I, was, I think I did a poem about cats when you, when yeah. you did a show about the cat shelter. Yeah. yeah. Charity show, and I wasn't very, very nice to cats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I do, you know, cats are okay. Yeah. Cool. Bye for now. Bye for now. Thank you very much. Look after yourself. Yeah. Speak to you soon. Take care. Bye bye. I'm going to do one called Morecambe, and I have done this one before. I've only got half of it here, it's a good job I remember the first half, isn't it? <laughs> so I don't need that more. Let's I forget. Morecambe Bay, written for my mother's 80th birthday. I wanted to take her back sort of 50 years to when she was 50 years younger. And so I did with this, this was my present to my mother. Here it is, Morecambe Bay. We look forward to that summer's day. When we got dressed in shorts and headed off to Morecambe Bay. Well, I remember that summer's day. The Shanna Bank we took, it shook. Round along to sound our songs and boyish laughter. 
and after what seemed eternity we smelled the sea and could see in technicolour the ocean, greens and blues and several other different hues. And then my mum said, off you go now, don't go too deep, I'll be watching from my deck chair. No fighting, off you go now. And she kissed us both. And she kissed Tom, who was the son of my dad's best friend. And off we went. We spent the morning catching periwinkles and splashing in Sunlit Bay. Well, I remember that summer's day. And then my mum called. In fact, she bawled. Come on now, boys, it's time for lunch. We had an lunch that after lunch she wanted to take us shopping. Hop, skip and popping in our Woolworths. And as I drank Tizer from my blue plastic cup, my dad turned up, hooray! Come on now, lads, I'm taking you off down to the fair. You were alone because you loved that horse. And off we went. He carried me on his shoulder, and I could see forever. I'm glad he never had drill cream on his hair today. He took us off to the fair. What a time we had, sat on horses, round and round, tipping for ducks. Everyone a winner, the cry went. It's the enjoying it, lads. Aye, Dad, you're great. My dad said, so wise and only eight. I wanted to see what the book was saw. But my dad said, that's for older boys. Come on now, it's time to go and find the man. And off we went. And on we on, no laughs, no shouts. Just yawns and smiles. And later, I cannot recall just when, though my mum did say it were after ten, she tucked us in and kissed us night and if my memory squints to tell, I can her perfume still enjoy and smell. Just before the light goes off, I turn to her brother and say, we'll not forget this lovely day. He said, go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I always pause a while in case um, things haven't started recording. Um, I wasn't intending to do a broadcast today, but I've had the opportunity, so I'm going to. Uh, and then I have to go to work. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to read four poems. I'm going to um, start with one called Dance Floor Slaughter. Pop Commando, Disco Queen, Dance Floor Slaughter is her scene. Hacksaw Quick Steps, Tango Fight. Piling bodies up tonight. Death stilettos, glitter ball. Time to dance or not at all. Strike out deadly, cut them dead. Bloodshed. All, cut, them, ugh, cut, them deadly, cut them down. Bloodshed all across the town. Whiplash loving, fevered brow. Nightclub rampage, burning now. Hang the DJ, hear them chant. She cannot kill to page and plant. Pop commando, disco queen. Dance floor slaughter is her scene. Crimson colours, dance floors red leaving footprints so to bed that's not that's a bad start i mucked it up <laughs> <coughs> dear oh dear um the next poem i'm going to read is from a book that i released at the beginning of the year uh called if poems were pies uh, i did a gig in march the first of march and uh, it was to celebrate the launch of this book um the poem i'm going to read is called Credit Crunch Boy Band. Times are hard, the agent said. In this credit crunch scenes pop is dead. Sales are down, business is ailing. Far too many bands we're now down scaling. There are five of you, soon they'll just be four. You'll have to finance your own tour. No more glitter balls or light shows blinding. No groupies now, nor contracts binding. The first to go, that's up to you. You can fight about it or talk it through. The fattest or fittest may survive. It's about the numbers. Man alive. The poorest singer, he could go. The crappest dancer, I don't know. We're not too bothered how you do it. Pick one or all, hey, try a duet. Yes, the times are hard, they've all been told. You're all too ugly, all too old. My dear, your greatest hits were fair to middling. No comment made on profit fiddling. We need our bonus, you're first to go. We're totting up how much you owe. We'll send you packing. No, we won't do lunch. Uh, there's now sadder than boy bands affected by a credit crunch. Um, yes, that's one of a few poems I've done which have looked at the, uh, more um, darkly comedic um, connections with credit crunch. Um, well, I, I read one yesterday um, on here called 
a Hollywood low budget and uh, that's a kind of a similar idea. Um, talking about Hollywood, uh, the next poem is, is from Caveman Logic, which is my new book. And this is what I've already published on the blog. It's called Out of Work Actors and it's um, inspired by a few actors that I've met along the way. Um, I used to act a lot myself, only amateur, but um, I, I did do a lot of it. I used to do a series called Sutton Park when I was at university, which was all ad lib and just ridiculous, but we made 3,000 episodes of that and I was in all of them. And well, so for most of the 1990s I was acting, but um, most of the actors that I worked with were really nice you know, and they were just friends and it was all just fun. But along the way I did meet some semi-professional actors who weren't quite as um, uh, humble as perhaps they should have been. So this is called Out of Work Actors. Out of work actors, they're just taking a rest from those classical roles where they're stupidly dressed. They're just taking a break to spend more time with the cat, or to write up their memoirs or some confessional tat. Once an extra in Hamlet, somewhat muffled in armour, getting murdered to death in some serious drama. But they're not doing it now because the work ain't emerging, so they sit with their memories just quietly purging. Yes, out of work actors will pursue their next part. So don't smirk if you see one, because they're missing their art. Out of work actors find it so hard to live, so few f roles for them now, yet they have so much to give. It seems that no one is casting, they find it so tough to cope. They would even consider a short stint in a soap, playing somebody's sister just returned from the dead, or some serial killer who's not right in the head, some poor market stall holder who's lost her deposit, or a rugged East Ender who's still in the closet. Or out of work actors, get no chance to be choosy. They'd be proud to do panto down in Bude or in Pusey. Out of work actors, so many talents to list. They may appear quite upset, claim they're just acting pissed. When they chat to their agents, it can be quite exacting. When the press say they're fab, can't they see they are acting? Put them on the front page, use their voice on an ad. The union rep just went home, who's to say who's been had? Off to Edinburgh soon, just to set up the chairs. But it's still theatre work, because there's no need to split hairs. Hey, now out of work actor, this is no time to slouch. When the director is casting, time to hop on the couch. Out of work actors hope their big break is coming, as they sit on the streets with their guitar just strumming. They're channeling Larry while they think it's the norm. Telemarketing work helps them learn to perform. And all those dreams of bright lights, all that training in Rada. Well, it's poor consolation when they're empty of Lada. Reciting lines in their sleep, sipping gin from their shoes. Could they be the next Gilgood, Woody Allen's new muse? Those poor out-of-work actors, what a shame, must be hard as some pie-coated clown, and they've dreamt of the bard. Poor out-of-work actors. Um, yes, I'm terribly sorry for them. It's time. Right, well, I may be able to fit uh, two more poems in. This is called Did Kojak Use Curlers? Did Kojak use curlers? Did he ever use a comb? Did little orphan Annie ever find that perfect home? Did Bart Simpson ever grow up? Was Gandalf really wise? How come no one ever saw through Superman's disguise? Did Tom and Jerry ever make up while he coached he catch his prey? It never did occur to me that Big and Little Ted were gay. Did the doctor get a compass or time travel GPS? Did Moriarty shrug his shoulders, turn himself in and confess? Did the Muppets ask Miss Piggy? My God, she was a bitch. As was Wurzel's love Aunt Sally and Oz's wicked witch. Did the Wombles keep their common, clean and sparkling as brand new? Did Eeyore turn to Prozac so he wouldn't feel so blue? Did Dracula have a change of heart? Finally see the light. What of Mary Poppins? Did a brolly last the flight? Did Harold Steptoe make his fortune, maybe leave his moaning dad? Folk let their lives be trampled, but for some it's all they've had. So did Kojak use those curlers, or perhaps a large toupee? I think deep down we know the answer. We're just all too polite to say. I've not read that one in a long time. Right, well I've got a minute and a half, and I'm, I'm going to read the poem that I didn't 
get to finish reading in my last blog, uh, my last post. So I'm going to do it now so I don't have to rush it because I ran out of time yesterday. This is a new poem from my next collection, The Shy Life. It's called Kiss Me Quick. Kiss me quick before I'm sick, before I lose me dinner. A gentle kiss, no, not a lick like some oversexed beginner. Just kiss me quick, hard as a brick, and we'll soon have us a winner. A cunning kiss that plays a trick, a sly old money spinner. Kiss me slow, please have a go before my clock turns 40. A tasty kiss, not done for show, just done because it's naughty. Just kiss me slow, no need to blow, and please don't look so haughty. A simple kiss upon my toe, there's no shame in being sporty. Kiss me quick, you're very slick, I know you think it's funny. A splendid kiss that's laid on thick and not done for the money. So kiss me quick, a well-aimed kick, I'm not your fluffy bunny. A potent kiss, love, take your pick, just kiss me, you're my honey. There we go. Well, I actually managed to finish it this time. Um... Um, let's kiss me and a kiss me quick hack. Oh, don't I look sad? Poor me. Um, right, well, I have to go to work now, so uh, I'm not sure when I'm on next, but I'm definitely here next Saturday, and I'll probably be on. I guess well, I'll probably quite a lot on quite a lot this week. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the show. I will see you soon. Okay, have a good day. Bye bye. listeners that's about all we've got time for hope you've enjoyed this episode uh it was really enjoyable to catch up with john again um just to have a, a bit of a uh thing back to those days when we used to head down the poetry cafe to uh, uh to read some of our verse and uh, to to have a jolly good time and as i say it's really nice that we've still got some of those shows preserved and we can watch them back to this day all available on the Mr. Shayetti uh, YouTube channel. Anyway, hopefully we'll get uh, John back again. I would have asked him on the show earlier than I did, but, um, well, I don't know. Well, life gets so busy, you don't always know whether podcasting is everyone's cup of tea. And Well, my bad. I should have asked John a lot earlier than I did. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed hearing from him. Sorry we struggled a bit with the technology this time, but uh, um, I think it turned out okay. I hope you enjoyed the pieces from Pieces of Shy Yeti, my 2019 collection, and to date my most recent collection of poems. I'm sure I'll write some more at some point. I'm always dabbling in these uh, areas and noting down ideas, but, uh, yeah, it'll happen when it happens. OK, well, join us again soon. You take care. We've got a couple more poems from Pieces of Shy Yeti coming up, but that's pretty much it for now. OK, join us again soon. Bye-bye for now. When he looks into the mirror, it looks to him as if he's melting. At least, he's not alone. It's not just him who is going through this, but all of them. All those whom he grew up with. Has so much time really passed? Who is the villain who actually caused this? Who is it that allowed such things to happen? Who had the right? Who spoilt everything? It only seems minutes since they were all so beautiful. All that beauty, all that glamour is rapidly fading now. Soon it will only be preserved in old photos. Soon it will be gone forever. Life's biggest, cruelest joke. There is no comeuppance for this thief. Time is the thug that karma ignores. A bully who will never face justice. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> yes, goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. 
Wow. Really? No kidding. Thank you, darling. And you too. Bye-bye. This show is part of the Pride 48 Network. Find more shows over at Pride48.com. Oh, dear. <laughs> What's going on now? Oh, it's the Shy Life Podcast. Let's go. I have a voice. I have a voice. You have a voice. You have a voice. We have a voice. We have a voice. Unique voices in podcasting. Univospods.net. That is so Korean, Joe my God. You're a man of culture as well. <laughs> This is called Our Yeti Gone. Our Yeti Gone, at such a cost, the poor we mites are long since lost. We looked on shelves up on the roof, but still saw no sign of Yeti claw nor hoof. Behind the fridge, out in the shed, no frantic growls, we feared them dead. We looked so hard, we searched in vain, on hands and knees to spite the pain. Boxed up in store, coated in dust, for so many years we searched, we fussed. We did not sleep, our vision blurry, but saw no sight of those so furry. We left them food, we feared them famished. T'was hard to fathom where they'd all vanished. We called their names, we put up posters, placed beer mugs on their favourite coasters. But alas, no need to get excited. They did not show, no yeti sighted. Our hope now gone, our darkest hour. Life once so sweet, now sickly sour. Until... Suddenly, on summer morn, the air was filled with one large lazy yawn. Hibernation done, from the caves came creeping. Our beasts were back, now done with sleeping. Oh, happy day, from every nation came yelps of joy and celebration. Our Yeti, back, so glad they're home. Locked up tight to ensure they'll never, ever roam. Didn't get the poem. Uh, Paul read the thing. Didn't get it. Okay, let's just shut this one out. Get it going. <sighs> the best part of the Shy Life podcast is when it ends. <laughs> <laughs> now that one was funny. <laughs> Seven hundred and two, 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 seven